So after nearly an hour of trying to solve this live and continuously making mistakes, I decided to just pre-solve it and then walk you guys through what's going on here. So first, I didn't give you the formula for calculating crude birth rate, so here's crude birth rate. It's births divided by total population times 1,000. That will give you the number of births per 1,000 individuals. Crude death rate is the same thing, but substitute, substitute births with deaths. Great. Okay. So here we have a scenario. You would read it, blah, 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 blah. Current population density. So your formula for population density is population divided by area of land. Population per area of land. Our population is 250,000. Our land is 5,000 square kilometers. 250,000 divided by 5,000 is 50 people per square kilometer. When you're doing this math, your answer is a present. And classy people put presents in a box when they deliver them. So whatever your final answer is, put it in a box. So when I'm grading this, it's real quick and easy for me to look through and be like, eh, okay, boom, there's your answer. If you don't put it in a box, it's going to be points off because you've made me work. Okay, birth and death rates. So birth is births divided by total population times 1,000. We had 12,000 births, total population of 250,000 times 1,000 gives us 48. Deaths, same thing, but substitute births with deaths. Deaths divided by total population times 1,000, 10,000 was our deaths. That came from up here. Total population is still 250,000 times 1,000. So deaths divided by total population times 1,000 gives us 40. Now, the population growth rate is going to be crude birth rate plus I immigration minus crude death rate plus immigration divided by 10. Now, we don't have I immigration and immigration in this problem. How do we know? because it's not mentioned, so we can assume it to be zero. I'm a big nerd, I like to be in the habit of writing every step every time anyway. So, 48 was our birth rate, we got that from this problem. I immigration of zero. Death rate was 40, we got it from the, the problem above. With an immigration of zero, divided by 10. 48 plus zero is 48. 48, 40 plus 0 is 40, divided by 10. 48 minus 40 gives you 8 over 10, which gives us a growth rate of 0.8%. And then how long will it take the population to double? Our formula, d dt is doubling time, is 70 divided by your growth rate. 70 doesn't change, that's a constant. And our growth rate was 0 0.8. We figured that out. Toss that in a calculator. Your doubling time, 87.5 years. Go us. Okay, next page. We have another scenario. Jumping right back into it, what is the current population density? Okay, population density is people per area of land. Our population is 2.3 million people and our land is 800 square kilometers. So there's our population, 2.3 million people, and our area, 800,000 kilometers. We get 2.875 people per square kilometer, and I decided to round to one decimal point, 2.9 people per square kilometer. Now on your exam, College Board gives you a plus or minus 2% margin of error for math problems, and 2.9 is within that 2% of 2.875, which is wonderful. Okay. Number six, what are the birth and death rates? Well, births are births divided by total population times 1,000. We had 109,000 births, or 1.09 times 10 to the fifth, divided by 2 million, or 2.3 times 10 to the sixth, times 1,000, gives us 
Now, I like when you guys put units on everything, but for this, there is no required unit. If you wanted, you could put 47.3 births. That's a, that's a neat unit, but this is one of the rare exceptions where I don't require units on things. Neither will College Board. Hopping over to death rates. It's the exact same formula, but you substitute deaths instead of births. We had 111,000 deaths. And we still have a population of 2.3 million. Times 1,000 gives us 48.3 deaths. That's a crude death rate. That means for every 1,000 people in the population, 48 of them are dying every year. Okay. Now, growth rate is crude birth rate plus immigration minus crude death rate plus immigration divided by 10. We don't have any immigration and immigration in this problem. So those are both zero. So we end up with 47.3 minus 48.3 divided by 10, which gives us negative one over 10, which gives us a growth rate of negative 0.1%. Now here's a nice trick question. How many years will it take for the population to double? Well, you have negative growth. It's never going to double. So how long will it take? Never. Population is shrinking. It cannot double. Common sense. You guys get that. OK. Uh, doubling time comes up frequently in the multiple choice section of your exam, so make sure you guys are proficient with calculating it. Luckily, the formula is super easy. Doubling time is 70 divided by growth rate. We figured out our growth rate. Well, whoops, I bet. Uh, we figured out the growth rate for Transylvania, but this question's moved on and it's given us a growth rate. 1.3% per year. How long would it take to double? Well, 70 divided by growth rate becomes 70 divided by 1.3, and the 1.3 comes out of the problem. Put that in a calculator, pretty easy, 53.8. You guys are the first class to get a calculator for this population math stuff, so lucky you. Now we have a sub-question. How old will you be when this doubling occurs? Now this number will be different for you guys because you are not old like me, but for me, I took my age and I added my doubling time, which gave me this, and then instead of being a little kid and I'm six and a half, I decided to be an adult at 86.8 .8 years old. I am 86 years old. Go me. Okay, then we have another doubling time population. But this time, we're using a different application of the formula. This time, doubling uh, time is given to you, and you have to work backwards to solve for the population growth rate. This is just a single step uh, algebraic equation. You guys know this. so. I like to write down my formula and then fill in what I know. This time I know doubling time. I know that 70 stays constant and I'm solving for growth rate. So I cross multiply and I get 56R equals 70, but I want one R. So I divide both sides by 56 and I end up with the growth rate is going to equal 70 divided by 56, which gives me 1.25%. I can then double check this and go back to my original formula and do 70 divided by 1.25 and see if that gives me 56 years, which it does. Okay. Next, we have a little table. We're going to calculate growth rates and then associated doubling times for countries. Now, the growth rate is just going to be the crude birth rate minus crude death rate divided by 10. We don't have any immigration or immigration, so I skipped those. So we get 13 minus 8 divided by 10 gives us 0 0.5. 19 minus 5 gives us 14 divided by 10 is 1.4, etc. all the way down the table. It's the exact same application, so I'm not going to explain all of them. There we go. Now for doubling time, it's just 70 divided by growth rate and the growth rate is right there. So we take 70 and divide it by 0.5, and that gets us this 140. 
Now, normally, you would need units. 140 is just a number. It should be in years. But our table is already labeled years, which means everything that comes under it, that under it already has the years label by default. There's no need to waste time. Okay, so for Mexico, we have a growth rate of 1.4%. 70 divided by 1.4 gives us a doubling time of 50 years. Okay, Japan is just like Transylvania. It is not going to double because its population growth is negative. Negative. That just goes all the way down. All right, we skip to this section. This is that formula that I told you we're not going to do. And then 13, we just have another application of uh, growth rate. So growth rate doesn't change. It's still crude birth rate plus I immigration minus crude death rate plus immigration divided by 10. This problem didn't mention I immigration and immigration, so I skipped it. The crude birth rate, it tells us right in the problem, is 32. We didn't even have to solve it. And the crude death rate was 28 divided by 10. Gives us 4 divided by 10, which is 0.4%. But the second part, they've reduced their crude death rate to 12. Birth rate has not changed, so it's still 32 minus 12 divided by 10. Gives us 20 over 10, which is 2.0%. And then the final question is, what would happen to the doubling time? So we have to calculate doubling time two times. The formula has not changed. It's still 70 divided by growth rate, which means 70. And our initial growth rate was 0.4%, which gives us a doubling time of 175 years. The new doubling time, the formula is still the same. Doubling time is 70 divided by growth rate. But now it's 70 divided by 2, which gives us a doubling time of 35 years. So it's going to double much faster than it was before. And this isn't a, uh, super important to this population stuff, but this is what happens when countries move from uh, stage 1 to stage 2 of the demographic transition. They're moving from pre-industrial to transitional. Okay, final part, almost done. We have a little scenario. We are currently adding 84 million people to the world's population each year. That is about 229,000 each day. Below, we have a list of some of the world's worst disasters along with an approximate death toll. At today's growth rate, determine how many minutes, hours, days, weeks, or months it would take to replace those lost. Now. To solve this, it essentially boils down to you take column B, the number of deaths, and divide by 229,000, and that will tell you number of days. For some of these, particularly the small numbers, I converted it into minutes and hours after that. Uh, College Board will ask you, they will give you a unit to use in the final answer. They will say, like, okay, in how many days would it take, or how many months? This one didn't specify, so I just picked. So. Column B for the first one, number of deaths is 1,836. So we take 1,836 and divide by how many new people we add in a day. And that will tell me how many days it takes, which works out to 0 0.08 days. This is a case where your units matter. Now, if I wanted to solve that in hours, I would take my days and multiply by 24. That's just dimensional analysis. That gives us 0 0.2 hours. But still, that's a little hard to envision, so let's put it in minutes. Multiply by 60, because there are 60 minutes per one hour. It gives me 12 minutes. Any of those answers are acceptable. College Board will tell you what unit they want. I did not, so you can use whatever unit you think. Uh, I tend to stick with things that seem appropriate. So in this case, I went minutes, since 0 0.08 days doesn't really mean much to you. So, yeah. And then we have the rest of the solutions. All of them are the exact same application of this formula. It's column B divided by 229,000. 
that gives us our number of days. If I moved it into hours, I then multiply it by 24. If I put it into days, I multiply it by 60. That's it. <laughs>